humans are encroaching on more and more of the planet. We consume it. We wage war. We pollute. We destroy. It is time to realise that we are not alone. We just behave like we are. Almost all of the primate species share more than 90% of their genetic makeup with us, with chimpanzees and humans differing by as little as 2% of DNA. Some scientists have even proposed that chimpanzees be included in the same genus as us humans, that they be reclassified as Homo troglodytes. Animal Defenders International believes it is time to extend our compassion beyond our own kind and to the other species who share our world. And what better place to start than with the relatives we have shunned and treated so badly for years? The similarities in behaviour, emotions and intellectual performance between ourselves and our fellow primates are striking. For example, chimp babies need the same things as human children. They need to be held, loved, talked to and played with. Studies have shown that chimps are highly intelligent and cooperative. They nurture family bonds, adopt orphans, mourn, practice self-medication and engage in struggles for power. They also exhibit many of the same emotions once thought to be exclusive to humans, such as jealousy, envy, compassion, greed, sloth, avarice and malice. Even our slightly more distant relatives, the monkeys, can also display similar emotions and intelligence. And, whilst chimpanzees may be our closest family, it's acknowledged that all the apes and the monkey species are intelligent, dexterous, can problem solve, live in important social structures and require a stimulating environment. Since Darwin first placed chimpanzees in our family tree, it's been acknowledged that we share common ancestry with chimps and, further back in time, with the other primates as well. These are our cousins in the animal kingdom and all have a capacity to suffer greatly in captivity, as we would. Yet we inflict suffering on them daily and we are taking some of these species to the very brink of extinction. Areas of Africa, South America and Asia where apes and monkeys were once safe have been opened up by logging. Now they find themselves within human grasp. Bushmeat. The word commonly used to describe the meat of a wild animal poses the greatest threat to the very existence of the great apes in the wild, even surpassing habitat loss. These animals will regret forever the day that the relatives came calling. As we lounge on our expensive hardwood furniture, the life flickers out of the forest from which it was taken. It's perhaps not surprising that we lack respect for our primate cousins, when for centuries we have treated them as mere objects to amuse us, dressing them, ridiculing them, forcing them to perform silly tricks, debasing ourselves in the process. In circuses, our shameful past is kept alive. Apes and monkeys are enslaved, caged and chained. Their complex social lives are shattered. Violence and other methods of control are used to make them perform. Their teeth may be pulled out to ensure that they cannot fight back. Could we be bigger bullies? Life is no better in the seemingly more glamorous world of television, advertising and the movies. Primates live in family groups, in complex societies, but performing animal suppliers require regular one-to-one -one contact to maintain control, dependence and obedience. So the trainer deprives these animals of normal social contact with their own kind locking them into a lonely world where affection is handed out as a prize for compliance. The chimpanzee's smile, which you so often see in films, advertising or circuses, is actually a grimace of fear. It's a sad irony 
that it's our empathy for these creatures that is being exploited by the cynical advertiser. It's with further irony that baby chimpanzees, orangutans and small monkeys are popular as pets simply because they resemble human babies. The object of the human owner's affection has suffered the pain of being torn from their mother for a life of isolation from their own kind. Whatever the love being lavished on the pet, it's emotionally damaged and heading from cute baby to unruly teenagers and on to become a very strong and maladjusted adult. And then it's time to throw out the baby. They provide humans with company, but they are utterly alone and all too often as disposable as the nappy in which they were once dressed. But perhaps nothing compares to the systematic abuse of our cousins in the name of research. They're isolated, infected with disease and force-fed products. Monkeys continue to be snatched from the wild for this enormous industry and shipped from Asia, South America and Africa across the globe. Even those primates bred in captivity retain their natural instincts, their emotions and their intelligence. And so they suffer terribly in the deprived and confined laboratory environment. Some are simply driven out of their minds before the experiments even start, mutilating themselves and displaying disturbed behavior. Some people might argue that scientific research is an exception and that the similarities between ourselves and the other primates justifies their use in experiments. But this is not the case. In nature, we can see the richness of diversity that just a small percentage of difference in DNA has made. These key differences at the cellular level make a world of difference in results of laboratory tests, which is misleading. Moreover, our closeness to the other primates means that we can comprehend their suffering. It does not make them identical. It does not make them hairy, laboratory-sized people. In medical research, we need the precision of modern technology and human-based study, not the academic arrogance and indulgence to try to justify torturing our animal cousins. Certainly, we must care about our own species. That's why we're funding advanced research facilities to investigate human disease, like this one. But our compassion doesn't have to stop there. My Mate to Primate is a campaign to highlight the exploitation of our animal cousins. We investigate and expose their abuse. We rescue them when they are suffering. We educate and we work for improved legislation. It is now time to put right a terrible wrong, to recognize that we are not alone. They share our love of life and suffer the travails of life on earth, as we do. It's time to see the primates aren't just our mates, they're part of the family.